Self-Made Mastery is supported by ZocDoc. If your doctor can recite every line from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off but can't remember your name, it's time to get a new doctor. With ZocDoc, good health is priceless. And over the years, I've realized just how important it truly is to find a doctor you like and trust. That's why I use ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I'm one of them. So go to ZocDoc.com slash self-made and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash self-made. ZocDoc.com slash self-made. Self-made mastery is supported by Indeed. Hiring for your business can feel harder than just doing all the work yourself, but now I actually look forward to hiring. Why? Because I use Indeed. On Indeed, you can find top talent fast with a suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Something I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. So join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed and visit indeed.com slash self-made to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash self-made. Indeed.com slash self-made. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello everyone and welcome back to Self Made Mastery. I'm your host Adrian Finch and this is episode number 89, The Secret to Finding Fulfillment in Everyday Things. In this episode you'll learn five ways to find fulfillment every single day, even within our mundane and often boring daily routines. We'll also discuss the common cliche of life is about the journey, not the destination, and the powerful significance that it actually holds. We'll talk about why humans need fulfillment and how we're wired to actually have a hard time finding it. And finally, we'll talk about the importance of finding fulfillment in everyday things as opposed to just seeking it out as a final destination, and then how to actually start feeling fulfilled every single day. So actual techniques and habits and things that you can do every single day to find fulfillment and realize your full potential. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Self-Made Mastery Podcast, your ultimate guide to total transformation. I'm your host, Adrian Finch, and I believe wholeheartedly that anyone from any background can create and live their dream life. And the best part is, you only need one thing to start, your mind. So join me here every Wednesday on this transformative journey to master your mindset and unlock your greatest potential. Let's go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Adrienne Finch and I am your host. I hope you all are doing well. As always, I want to say thank you for being here. Congratulations to you for taking that step, for pushing play on this and choosing to be here. Because by doing that, you have committed to this wonderful journey to master your mindset and transform your life. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Now, I kind of mentioned what this episode is going to be about today. We're discussing self-actualization and kind of fulfillment, how to find fulfillment in every single day life and why it's so important to do so, why that is a basic human need that we actually must fulfill in order to realize our full potential and actually live the greatest life, you know, and, and carry out our dream life. So I want to start for a second by kind of talking about like this common cliche we tend to hear, which is like life is about the journey, not the destination, right? It's kind of cliche. It's very overused, but I want to break it down for a second because there is actually so much power in this cliche, in this statement. It is one of the most true things to exist. Life is about the journey. It has to be about the journey, not the destination, right? And if you think about our lives, the sort of timeline of our lives we work our whole entire childhoods and lives to get to this point of you know having a good job or whatever it is and then we work our whole lives to eventually be retired at least a lot of people do right but then what after that and also like is that even satisfying once people get to retirement are they even going to be happy 
I can tell you from reading articles and statistics, a lot of people are not. You're so used to go, 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 working, trying to achieve things. All of a sudden you have nothing to do and you think that that is like the ultimate goal. You think, I have nothing I need to do. I'm going to just live my best life. But a lot of people do not find fulfillment in that. They get bored. They get lonely. They don't like the feeling of not accomplishing things. So you hear people say all the time, like, it's about the journey, not the destination. And as cheesy as that sounds, it's totally true. Because what even is the destination? And if you feel like you do have a destination or a current goal, right, it's always going to change. So back to kind of the timeline of our lives as an example, right? And obviously I'm speaking sort of in the traditional sense. Everybody's totally different, but you get the idea. So if we were to map out the sort of destinations that, you know, those kind of milestones or accomplishments or things we work towards in our lives, it would look something like this. When you're a kid, it's all about making it through high school, doing extracurriculars, getting good grades so that you can go to college or, you know, get a good job. That's the destination, right? But then once you're there, it's about working hard, working your way up so you can get promoted and be financially secure. And then maybe your next destination is to get married or start a family, then it's basically a lot of the same thing until you eventually make it to retirement if that's your goal. But literally then what? Then you're old and your whole life has gone by and if you haven't lived in the moment, if you haven't truly enjoyed that whole process, aka your whole life, and found fulfillment in those everyday moments and everyday routines, I can guarantee no destination or goal ever will fulfill you in the way that you think. Because once you reach one, there is already another one. So what makes you think that when you're retired, you'll finally sit back and be like, ah, yes, here we go. Finally, I feel so fulfilled. Self-actualization is complete. Like, no, I just don't think that that's realistic, but it's okay because we're going to talk about kind of how else you can sort of handle this timeline and how to actually make sure that you are enjoying the process and that you are living in the moment. I'm going to give you like actual ways to do that. So you know, there's a plethora of other reasons why we shouldn't only be focused on the destination, right? One being you never know what tomorrow holds. What if by the time you retire, you've lost physical mobility or your health has declined? I mean, even not talking about just retirement, like we've endured a global pandemic. We've literally seen firsthand that nothing is guaranteed. Our climate isn't guaranteed. Our health isn't guaranteed. And if everything was taken away tomorrow, would you be satisfied with your life thus far? Sadly, I think a lot of people might say no, they wouldn't be ready, they don't feel like they've done enough. I mean, okay, not sadly, because of course nobody wants to like die tomorrow or have everything taken away, but what I mean is if something were to happen tomorrow though, do I feel really happy with how my day went today? Do I feel at peace and fulfilled and as if like I've made a difference or whatever it is that my goals are? right? And I think like realizing that tomorrow is not guaranteed and realizing that we literally don't know what to expect and what the future holds, I think can help us hopefully realize the importance of living in the moment and trying to find those things every single day, even amidst our mundane and boring routines, right? So I know I sound like a broken record, but we are going to talk about the subtle ways to find joy and fulfillment in your everyday life and how to actually accomplish that. Um, We'll get there. That's like the last piece. Uh, But first, I'm kind of setting the stage for you. We know the power of consistency and that small daily changes are what actually add up to the biggest progress or transformations. Okay, before we move on, also really quick shout out to Liam Porritt for the inspiration for this episode. His YouTube videos are amazing and very eye-opening and I love his perspective. So I definitely recommend checking out his channel. I learned a lot of things from his videos. So shout out to Liam. Okay, so first of all, it's important to ask a question that you probably haven't thought about before, or maybe you have, I don't know. I honestly hadn't really until today. Um, And that question is, why is it even important to feel fulfilled? Why does it matter if we're proud of our accomplishments and, you know, happy with what we've done? Like, I know it's something we all seek, or at least most of us seek, but why is that and why does it matter? And I'm kind of thinking like, you know, in the most primitive way, when I'm thinking about animals and survival, like, Why is it that humans have these needs or these, you know, desires to be fulfilled in ways that other animals don't? 
So I first want to introduce you to something called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't. Um, It's a theory of psychological health. So it's basically a pyramid that lists human needs that must be fulfilled in order of priority. So the base, you know, is like the first priority all the way to the top is kind of the last. But it's this pyramid, this kind of hierarchy of needs. If you give it a Google, you'll be able to actually see this and follow along, but I'm going to walk you through sort of what these different layers are. So starting at the very bottom, the first two kind of levels of the pyramid fall under the category of basic needs. So the very bottom one being physiological needs. So things such as food, water, shelter, warmth, rest, all of our physical and physiological needs. The next level is safety needs. So security and safety, feeling like you are safe and taken care of. And those two categories together make up what Maslow calls the basic needs. The next two levels of the pyramid fall under the category of psychological needs. So we've got belongingness and love needs, which are intimate relationships, friends, socializing, you know, the feeling of belonging. And then above that, we've got esteem needs. So prestige, the feeling of accomplishment, right? Your self-esteem being strong. So again, the bottom two, we have basic needs, physiological and safety. The next two, we have psychological needs, belongingness and love and esteem. And then the final category on top falls under the category of self-fulfillment needs, and it is self-actualization. So achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. So that is the hierarchy of needs, according to Abraham Maslow, an American psychologist. Um, So again, from the bottom to the top, we've got physiological needs, then safety needs, then belongingness and love needs, then esteem needs, and self-actualization at the top. So I look at this pyramid, I look at this hierarchy of our needs, basically these five categories that must be fulfilled in order for us to, you know, live out our true potential. But I still ask myself after seeing this, why do humans need fulfillment, right? Why don't we just try to survive? Why don't we only try to survive since that is the core goal and instinct of all living creatures, of course. So I still ask myself though, like why do we need those things? Why do we need beyond just the physiological and safety needs? And to be honest, when I was researching this, I didn't find a lot out there, which kind of surprised me. Just a whole lot of evidence I found that we need these things, but not so much what will happen if we don't satisfy them or why it is that we actually need them. The closest thing I found was that if any of these needs are unmet, that lack can easily hamper your ability to meet the other needs. AKA all human needs must be taken care of collectively to maintain a quality of life. So that resonated with me because I realized, okay, this kind of works like a system, right? Without the fulfillment of one tier, the others may crumble. So they work together. They work in synchronicity to create this quality of life that humans desire and quote need. So This is all going to become very relevant in a second when I talk about self-actualization being at the top of the pyramid, okay? So back to why we need fulfillment, though. The theory, or I guess Maslow's theory, is that these needs on this hierarchy, which are listed in order of priority, are what motivate us. So that's what they are. They are the things that motivate us, the needs that we have that motivate us. So not necessarily what allow us to survive, but what allow us to thrive and have a good quality of life, right? So that made a little bit more sense to me. Like this is what motivates us and allows us to really enjoy life and actually thrive and have a good quality of life. We as humans are highly intellectual and complex beings. And so it does make sense that our emotional needs not being met could affect our ability to get our basic needs met too, right? And I'm sure we've all experienced things like that. But there's one problem in my mind, and it's about the way this hierarchy is laid out. Yes, I agree totally that physiological needs like having food and water and shelter are, of course, the most important needs to be met, especially when it comes to survival, right? I get why they come first. We do need those things to even function as humans. But the order of this hierarchy isn't truly indicative of how intertwined all of these needs truly are. 
how dependent they are on each other and how possible it is to actually fulfill all of these at once every single day, right? Rather than traveling through the hierarchy level by level until you've reached the peak of the mountain, which is self-actualization. And I think that's what a lot of people think you're supposed to do. Travel through it, right? Like bottom to top or rather subconsciously because we don't even know maybe that this exists, but I think subconsciously, We go through these motions in a very linear fashion. Instead of finding ways to actually fulfill all of them simultaneously, we don't realize that's possible or whatever it is, we're not doing it. And truthfully, I think that's at the root of why a lot of humans have trouble finding fulfillment. Because without even realizing, we are treating self-fulfillment as that destination, as that, you know, the final stop, the reward at the end. We're treating self-actualization, finding our true potential as this this top of the mountain instead of something that's possible to achieve at every step of the journey. So for example, let's talk goals for a second, right? You decide you have a goal, you work towards that goal, you achieve that goal, and then you're on to the next goal, right? Which by the way, all sounds fine and good. You know we love goal setting here. There's so much benefit to it. We absolutely should do it. But if you can get honest with yourself for a second, I want you to ask yourself, How intentional are you about savoring those moments of accomplishment when you do hit those goals? Like, do you really sit with that for a second? Do you sit there? Are you truly proud of yourself and you really acknowledge how far you've come before anything else, right? Do (laughs) you? I know I'm guilty of not a lot of times. Um, But yeah, ask yourself, do you sit with that? Do you savor those moments? Do you really feel like you're in those moments and really appreciating the journey before almost immediately wanting more as it tends to go typically? Which makes sense, by the way. We are literally wired to like want more and there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But often with the desire for more comes the absence of appreciation for how far you have come and what you have accomplished. And if we aren't taking the time to be grateful and proud of ourselves, Are we actually achieving self-fulfillment? Are we? Or are we just constantly on the train trying to get there? Because that's what I feel like I experience. Like each time we get to a stop, we kind of change our mind and want to go just one more stop. Like we're on that train. And I'm super guilty of this. And I feel like sometimes I can't get out of this state of sort of constantly feeling behind And hey, if your answer is like, you know what, Adrian, I do live in the moment all the time. I savor everything and I find fulfillment in everyday life, then hell yes, congratulations, because it's hard work. And I'd also not be surprised because you guys are very passionate go-getters and we're always thinking about self-improvement here. So if that's you, then amazing, like good for you. We all need to strive to be more like that. But if you ask yourself that question and realize, you know what, I could definitely stand to be in the moment more because I do feel like I'm constantly looking ahead and I constantly feel behind. I always feel like I'm chasing something that never really comes. I'm sure you guys have probably felt that way at some point in your life. You feel like you're chasing something, but you're never quite there. And I personally, I'm worried that I'm letting all of these years pass without truly feeling satisfied or like I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. Like I'm not sitting here every day being like, oh, I just need to get like to that next thing. But I sort of like truly look back at what I've done and realize it's pretty amazing and yet I think in my actual everyday life I am kind of constantly like wanting to get to that next level and hey if that's you too there is no shame in that that's literally why we're here right step one is realizing this and step two is deciding that you want to live differently and to be honest I'm hovering kind of somewhere in the middle because I truly do feel like this is me a lot of the time I'm always hustling to get over this hump that never seems to be gotten over like oh if I make this much money I'll feel more relaxed or whatever it is right but that's just not true at all like it's not gonna happen that way do you know when I actually felt the most at peace like the most actually relaxed and calm and in the moment it has never been when I've like made that amount of money that I thought I wanted right and actually thus far in my life when I have felt the most peace and calm in a really weird way was lockdown when we were literally locked down. Obviously, it was stressful for a lot of other reasons, but if we're purely thinking about feeling calm or or like feeling relaxed, for me personally, and I know I'm unique in this, it was lockdown. (laughs) The only way for me to harness true peace and enjoyment of every single day was for the future to legitimately be unknown. Like, I could not even look to the future 
because I didn't know what it would hold. I literally only knew what today and maybe tomorrow will be like. Everything could change in the blink of an eye. And there was this weird, amazing piece to that where all I could do was live in the today and like enjoy what I was doing today and not stress about how I'm behind or I should have done more work because next week, blah, blah, blah. Like literally I was just in the moment. And ever since then, I've been really working on trying to harness that same feeling without having to, you know, be in a global pandemic. Um, So self-made mastery is supported by ZocDoc. If your doctor can recite every line from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off but can't remember your name, it's time to get a new doctor with ZocDoc. Good health is priceless, and over the years I've realized just how important it truly is to find a doctor you like and trust. That's why I use ZocDoc. ZocDoc makes it easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Plus, with real verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you. One that actually remembers your name. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you. One that makes you feel like you're in good hands, you're supported, and you're heard. Even if you're telling them about your favorite movie. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun. And booking an appointment with the mobile app is as easy as booking a ride somewhere. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. And I'm one of them. So go to ZocDoc.com slash self-made and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash self-made. ZocDoc.com slash self-made. Self-made mastery is supported by Indeed. Hiring for your business can feel harder than just doing all the work yourself. But now I actually look forward to hiring. Why? because I use Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. No more spending hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. On Indeed, you can find top talent fast with a suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Something I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job. Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. So join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed and visit indeed.com slash selfmade to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash selfmade. Indeed.com slash selfmade. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. I'm going to give you my suggestions in a second here, but let me just recap really quick before moving on because I just said a lot. So according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there are five needs that motivate humans and allow us to live with the best chance of having the best quality of life. Though they're in order of priority, each of these needs is actually intertwined and humans are capable of fulfilling them all at once all the time, which is my personal opinion. Yet oftentimes we don't. And instead, we sort of view self-fulfillment, that final you know, piece, as the destination at the end of a long journey. We view it as the reward at the end of the tunnel, like, oh, we'll get there if we, f- if we hit all these other ones first. Maybe retirement, maybe you know, some huge vacation, like, I don't know, whatever it is, it's, we view it as the end goal. And what we don't realize is by viewing self-fulfillment as the end goal rather than finding it every single day in subtle ways, we are holding ourselves back from our true potential and we're never actually experiencing true fulfillment. We're always chasing that thing that truthfully never comes. And that can be what's happening if you feel like your life is boring or your routine is mundane. If you're constantly feeling like there isn't much purpose in what you're doing, whether at work or at home, then you're lacking self-fulfillment. And so we're going to talk about how we can find that every single day instead of sort of being on this train of mundane things, eventually letting off at the stop of self-actualization because that's just not the case. That's just not how life works. A lot of people also talk about happiness as 
not actually the feeling of extreme joy and heightened positive emotion, but rather the feeling of contentment and fulfillment with everyday things. I've heard so many people say that, that like the key to happiness is actually just being content, like letting little daily, like kind of mundane things bring you joy. And I want to be clear that they aren't saying we should lower our expectations because, you know, the happiness we strive to find isn't possible. They're saying it is possible. It is possible to be as happy as you want to be, as fulfilled as you want to be, and just at a way lower bar than what we think. We're just not seeing it. And what keeps us from seeing that? Well, like things like capitalism, consumerism, advertisements, everything that is constantly shoved in our face telling us that we need the newest gadgets, clothing, vacations. It's literally shifting our human ideal of what happiness is and how to achieve it, right? Because we don't actually need all those things, but the second we feel like we need that, what we currently have becomes less than. But okay, that will be a topic for another time, but it is all kind of related. And I hope that helped kind of paint a picture of how this all flows. Okay, now we've said a lot about why we as humans should shift our way of thinking in order to find fulfillment throughout the process, right? In everyday things, rather than just once you've arrived at some future destination, right? But now, how do we actually do that? How are some you know ways we can find fulfillment in our everyday lives without getting overly complicated? Like, what can I do tomorrow? What can I do today to change this? So I'm going to give you five kind of tips that I personally have for finding fulfillment in our everyday lives. Number one being be intentional about the ways that you'll find fulfillment each day. So all I really mean by that is first thing in the morning or the night before, actually think about things that you're going to be doing that day that you will find fulfillment in things that make you happy, right? Or that give you a sense of fulfillment. I keep using that word, but it's because That is really the word that we're talking about here is feeling fulfilled. I think you all know what that feels like. And there are many ways to do that, right? But number one is like be intentional about it. Like actually think about what you're going to do that day and in which things you will find fulfillment in. And in this case, I'm talking about self-actualization. So things that may be steps towards your greater goals at work or your personal goals or fulfilling other needs that you may have, such as going on a walk with a friend after work, which might fulfill you know, your psychological needs. It's filling the belongingness and the love need. For me lately, I've been trying to read for 30 minutes a day, and lately I've been reading like self-improvement books with my mom actually, and then every Friday we discuss like a little book group. But for me, that is fulfilling multiple of my needs. Number one, I feel more accomplished going into my day having read and kind of learned and absorbed, and I feel good about myself before I've even started work, which really sets the tone for the day. And number two, connecting with my mom about the book gives me that accountability and like fills that kind of family bucket of you know, wanting connection and, and all of that. And one thing to note that Liam Porritt actually says in his video is you don't need to find majority of the things you do day to day fulfilling in order to actually be self-actualizing. So AKA there's a lot of mundane bullshit that comes with being a student or having a job or being an influencer, whatever it is that you do, you can't expect that every single thing will feel amazing and like an accomplishment and that you love it because that's just not realistic. So don't focus too hard on everything in my day has to be amazing and self-fulfilling, right? It's about finding those those small pieces though that add up to a lot. And if you're not intentional about it, sometimes it won't happen or it'll happen and you're not even aware that it's happening and that's part of the whole problem, right? Is that we're not in the moment of this process. We're letting things pass right by us and just looking ahead. So be intentional, plan out kind of ways in which you're going to, you know, find fulfillment every day. Number two, find ways to do what you love every single day. So this is slightly different. And I'm talking about at work and outside of work. So if you love talking to people, for example, you could volunteer at your school to be, you know, a campus tour guide or a resource for new freshmen. If you love spreadsheets, you could offer your department at work to create a new system of organization or a workflow or something that basically allows you to do more of things that you like to do and also show that you're dedicated, which can also help you self-actualize and get given more opportunities and move up the rankings and so on. And this also applies to outside of work too. I know that's something I need to do a lot more of. I love my job. So 
so much that like I'm always filling my day with work related tasks, but sometimes I find that I need to just do something for fun that isn't about success or achievement. That's like literally just fun. It brings me joy and peace and you know, something like painting or working out. Um, so find ways to do what you love every single day. This is similar to the, the self-fulfilling, like find things that you will find fulfillment in, but they can be slightly different because sometimes fulfillment you know, is more about the self-actualizing of sort of using your skills and kind of hitting these goals. And not that you shouldn't love what you're doing. I hope you do love what you're doing. But this is very specifically like if money weren't even a thing, if your job wasn't even important, like literally what do you love doing? What could you just lose yourself in every single day? And make sure that you do something every single day like that, even just a small thing. All right, number three is to create your circle of positive influence. So people, friends, jobs, media, social media, be actually intentional about what you're consuming and who you are choosing to surround yourself with. And make sure that you're choosing the things that make you feel happy and fulfilled and fill you up. And try, if possible, to actually spend less time with the other kinds of things. And I know to a certain degree, we can't always control what we're around. You know, you might have a coworker that is really bad vibes, but you got to go to work. So of course, there's going to be like moments that you can't always get rid of it. But even just the pure act of, of knowing and being aware of what is your positive influence, what is your negative influence will even help. And then there are ways to just, you know, spend a little bit less time with that or just choose to not, you know, tune in when said negative coworker is talking a bunch of smack about other coworker. Like just create your own circle of positivity, whatever that means for you and be intentional about that. Number four is realize that you don't need to just like have one purpose or one goal and that your goals and purpose will constantly be changing. So even though we're trying to be so in this moment today, we also need to realize that it's okay for things to change constantly. So we don't need to like have this one thing figured out because that is sort of like, okay, that's your end goal and you know, that's all you're focused on. It's okay to be having many different things that fulfill you. I feel like we can accidentally spend so much time trying to figure out what that one thing is that we can spend years being like, what is that thing? But the truth is we're all very multifaceted people with a ton of different interests. So there are so many ways to find fulfillment. I was talking to someone at the gym the other day who is like, he must be in his mid forties or maybe 50. And he was telling me how he's moving out of the country and he's starting a new career and he's already done like two different other careers like that are totally different from each other. And him just saying that sort of gave me peace at this moment because I'm only, you know, I'm still like in my 20s. So I'm like just in that beginning grind of like being an adult in the workplace, even though I've been doing it for like 10 years. But, you know, I'm sometimes feeling like, yeah, I need to get to that next thing. Like I need to hit that goal. Not realizing that like I could literally have like four different careers throughout my life if I really want. And I might find so much joy and fulfillment in all of those. Like sometimes I worry so much about getting burnt out and like, oh my God, how am I going to do this for the rest of my life? And the answer is like, you don't have to. And that's part of finding fulfillment every day. If I'm so stressed about the future and like, you know, what I'm going to be doing forever, I won't really be enjoying this moment. But the truth is maybe in five years, I'm going to decide I actually want to become a dancer. I don't know. I made that up. Or like, you know, a pilot, Uh, probably not, but you know what I'm saying? And when that time comes, I'm going to want to look back and not think that I was rushing through this part of my career and not really savoring it and really, you know, being in that moment. But it was kind of peaceful to realize I could choose many different paths throughout my life and I could change it many different times and you still got time to do that. So it's kind of like, Also, by the way, in that movie Soul, if anyone saw that, where he's like kind of struggling to find a single passion, but actually found fulfillment in like many other things. Yeah, that's what we should be. (laughs) Um, And then finally, number five, I just think this is really important and we can't overlook how important this is, is actually reflecting. Whether it's at the end of your day or your week, the best way to figure out what is fulfilling in your day-to-day life is to reflect at the end of each day. And ask yourself, did you do the things you had set out to do and did you find them fulfilling and maybe what surprised you that you found fulfilling that maybe you didn't think would or, 
you know, what did you realize you loved or just what was like the good part about today? I know it's hard to get into a new habit like this, like reflecting, journaling, you know, being intentional, but hey, you can always listen to uh, my last couple episodes that talk all about how to actually create new habits that you'll stick to. But really, I think like as easy as it sounds, that is how easy it is, is just being aware and being intentional and choosing every single day to pick a couple things out that feel fulfilling to you. If you have a greater goal, like for me, another goal that I've had is um, to start like selling some digital products online. And so I broke it down, that goal broke it down into like smaller steps. And one thing that's felt genuinely really fulfilling every single day is just taking, I've been taking this online course kind of showing me how to do this very well. And learning and absorbing that knowledge just one little piece at a time every single day makes me feel so fulfilled kind of the same way that reading this book does I just feel so good about like my brain and I just feel proud that I'm taking steps to like learn things and try new things and take risks and something as simple as that as just like taking a little bit of an online course gaining knowledge something like that can bring you so much fulfillment and when you feel fulfilled every single day in little ways you're going to just overall live a way happier and just better quality of life instead of constantly chasing this kind of far out destination and just thinking that a certain milestone will make you feel a certain way. Because the truth is, and you can talk to anybody, I listen to podcasts of like famous, famous celebrities and actors and CEOs and everyone says the same thing that when the accomplishment that they wanted happened it was not the way they thought it would be they did not just all of a sudden have this flip of a switch life is perfect I'm so happy no and it is so like real and also kind of jarring to hear that that like it just doesn't happen that way And there would be nothing worse than trying to chase this thing, finally getting it, and then just being let down. Wouldn't you rather enjoy every step of that moment and then really savor and enjoy like the accomplishment at the end, not be let down and not have all this kind of built up like energy? Because also then if something doesn't go the way that you want, like if you shoot a movie and it flops and nobody watches it, like then you're at least still feeling like proud and happy that you made it. Your goal is not other people's validation or, you know, winning an Oscar. Like the goal is I actually did the thing and that was awesome and fulfilling and fun and meaningful. And that's why I talk so much about goals being kind of action steps rather than outcomes, just because that means that you're sort of fulfilling each of these mini goals along the way that make you feel happy and and fulfilled and like you've accomplished things and it doesn't put all the weight in the world on this one kind of final achievement only to sort of be let down when you get there at like oh that lasted one second and like now what right so I will stop rambling that is what I'm gonna leave you with my kidlets I hope you enjoyed this episode. I had so much fun just thinking about this and really questioning the way that the world is. I want to give you all permission to question everything, all right? It doesn't mean that you're saying the way that it is is bad. It just means that you're questioning it. You're wondering why. You want to know why things are the way that they are. I'm not a psychologist, and yet I just took this hierarchy of needs and interpreted it based on what I see in the world and my current perspective of the world and human beings. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I would love to hear any thoughts that you guys have. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. I will catch you in the next episode. Keep crushing it. You guys rock. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.